in and you can reach us at 323 ah 524 Two five nine nine. Ryan, the number on the screen is incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> I just started to read it, so let me say that again: three two three five two four two five nine nine. Or you can comment in uh, the Facebook comment box below. We love seeing your your comments, and we actually have conversations with people on Facebook all the time. Yes, we do. <laughs> um, you know, you said two words for me that are what I when I was doing some research on this that came up a lot. Mm-hmm. One is wearables, and one is video. Yeah. So I want to start with video because I, I thought it was really fascinating that many teams um, are literally like draping their stadium, their practice arenas in video that can capture so many different images and, and players and what's going on in the stadium all at the same time. Yeah. And I... You know, you're talking about taking all that information and dissecting it or at least presenting it in a way that shows where it's all going. But how like how far can that technology go? How how far is that technology going? Like how minutiae, minutia, <laughs> what what level of detail can these video cameras capture at this point? Well, um so the, these video cameras are not your normal video cameras like what we're seeing in here. These are basically computers. They're In and of themselves. Yeah. They're computing at the edge, what we call edge devices. Edge meaning they're not going through a computer. They're not going through a server. They're going, they're computing at the device. Right. So that's why they have their own sets of data. And different ones capture different inf- information. Like StatCast is MLB's uh, video system and it's being used in broadcast now to if you've seen the video where you watch the lines of right. where the players run that's all statcast information so statcast is is capturing different information where did they run um how fast did they run um what's the line of the run you've seen that where they curve out and they're like okay how can we catch speed but they're looking right. at defensive plays which is new for for the baseball cuz most of the stats around baseball have always been around um, the battery the pitcher the 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 catcher and then the the hitter that's where most of the stats are coming from um, now we can start getting some defensive stats with with video systems like that you can start seeing okay what is um, what is the point of movement when a ball is hit? Yeah. Uh, how fast do you have to move and which way do you go and, and, and start analyzing errors in that w- in a different way than you've done before. Now you layer on top of it, like in, when, I, when I work with UEFA teams, um, they have various video systems that, that are looking at um, where they are on the pitch um, in, conge- in, in relation to players. It's a very different game, so they're measuring very different things. Um, so where did they run on the pitch and how, how did that coordination with the team happen and passing in the ball and what was successful and what wasn't? Yeah. Um, but they can, I've watched some of those teams layer their, um, their video analy- analytics with a wearable analytics, especially in training, on top of it. Because um, at this point, uh, I don't believe UEFA has allowed wearables in the game yet or they are about to and they're they're just getting started but um so before you you could only layer these things within training yeah. um but now you can it's really fun to watch those screens with the numbers going by sure. about uh that that combine the video and the wearable systems and uh, it's like a big um NASA control center <laughs> where we're out here looking at multiple screens. It's so that, wild. Yeah. Is there a particular sport where you're seeing it more impacted, either positively or negatively, based on the data that's coming in? Yeah. Um, it's really interesting. I think um, because soccer or football, as we call it in Europe, is right. is global, it, it's, it's kind of haphazard there's like the rich teams and the poor teams which sure. began with money ball right yeah um thank you for bringing that up i yeah. was going to <laughs> can you please talk about that yeah. for me now <laughs> it was closing the gap between rich teams and poor teams yeah. so so you know soccer is spread out across um all kinds of uh rich teams and poor teams sure so i think the well-off um champions league type teams in europe yeah. are really advancing uh probably more than you'd suspect yeah um, like Barca has their whole innovation hub now, which is all about research and innovation in performance analytics specifically. Um, I think they are doing really amazing advanced things. And everybody points towards baseball because of Moneyball. Right. right. That they expect baseball is doing a lot. And they sure. are. 
uh, MLB stat, um, MLB advanced media, yeah. um, does a lot of analytics. Um, it's private. It's controlled by the MLB. Okay. There's not a lot of sharing of that information, yeah. um, even within the teams, honestly. Um, but UEFA and FIFA don't have a coordinated effort as of yet. But Barca got them to come together and just last week announced a, a data sharing standard mm-hmm. across wow. soccer teams across Europe. Now, that will, will change the game. I am not sure how, for good or bad, getting back to for good or bad, right. and how people participate. Because... Think of it if you're if you're a, a soccer team like um, Barca or Chelsea, um, that data on your players is pretty much your yeah, in, right. intellectual property. Yeah, you exactly. don't want it out there. Yeah. So I applaud them having this platform for sharing data, and they say it's for sharing performance data as well. I can see it for sharing fan data. Sure. Um, but that's very different than the performance and medical data. So I'm not sure how it's going to work. It's only a couple of weeks old, but that's something I'm definitely going to be keeping my keeping eye, eye on. Keeping eye on, exactly. Yeah. Wow. So one mm-hmm. of the things that I found interesting, you go, you did cite Moneyball and, and yeah. how when I was reading up a little bit on it, the fact that Billy Bean came in and he used – his analyt, his way of doing analytics, which now is ten, what ten years ago, yeah. or something like that, is completely outdated and has moved on hugely. Yeah. But he made choices um, about who he was going to play based on these different mm-hmm. data points that had a lot to do with on on base percentages. Yeah. Which sometimes work to the detriment of existing players on the team. Yeah. So my question, you, you've you talked to players, I'm sure. Like, how do they feel about being data up? Like, right. everything they put on is a wearable point of data. Everything, like, knowing that, like, it, and it, it was interesting because the one thing the article said is, obviously, you can never really, like, analyze the heart of the, of the meaning the, the soul of sure. the player, the right. desire, yeah. the drive yeah. of the player. Yeah. But yet, if the desire is there, but the all of the data is coming in against it against them yeah how are they feeling about all of this well i think most players um are very concerned not as concerned as they should be because i don't think they understand how much is being collected and what where that information is going i i don't even think the teams understand how much is being collected or or, and where it's going and what that is so baseline (laughs) We're going to need to see collective bargaining around data wow. and wow. who owns data. Well, I was going to ask wow. that. Like, if it's my body and yeah. I'm producing yeah. this information, okay. don't sure. I own it? Well, well, so that's yeah. the athlete yes. perspective. <laughs> the athlete says, my body, my data, I own it. Yeah. The team says, nah, we own you. Right. We own the data. We own it. The league then says, no, we own yeah. you, team, and it's our data. Yeah. So on the MLB, for example, it's clear. MLB Advanced Media owns that data, and even the teams can't access it sometimes. They own everything. They own everything from the the mobile app yeah. is, is designed and, and built by uh, MLB, and they can't change it. If, sure. if they own it, just out of curiosity, if they own it, do they pay for it, or do the teams have to pay for all of the, the well, cameras, the wearables, all of that? Well, the, the way it works is uh, the MLB... Um, all pay in. All the teams pay into MLB Advanced Media, so it's it's a it's an owner's collective sure. ownership. So they technically pay for it, but they don't own it. And MLB sells outside of baseball all the time. Um, you see, they sell into media mm-hmm. um, with Statcast and that data. And they just signed a deal last week with MGM Grand. Which gets us into betting. Now yeah. that betting has become yeah. legal, that's what that's what becomes really an issue. Is um, people want this data mostly because they're betting money, right? Um, and so where this data goes is really important. And people are not thinking through this and where it's where who owns this data, where it can go, how it can be used against me. Because think in your life, any time data has ever been collected on you, right? It's been used against you. Sure. Right. Um, healthcare. Yeah. Driving right. car, yeah, yeah. Right. It, it uses to set what's wrong with you, yeah. <laughs> and if you think that's not what's going to happen with these players, then and we're talking about this at a professional level, where uh, you know, for some they might say, "Well, these players are making so much money." I mean, really, at the end of the day, is it a huge issue? But talk to us about what's happening on a different level. What's happening at the collegiate level, for example? Yeah. So this this is all trickle down, and it and, and I need to say that it's different from country to country. Okay. Um, so 
we have a very different system here on how players are advanced. Yeah. Um, it, it's through the collegiate level. That's basically our youth academy. Um, in UEFA uh, and in soccer, they have um, youth academies. Sure. So you're brought in very young. You are owned by that team. You yeah. are educated by that team. It's a very different system. So they do own and track that data right. from from an early age. Yeah. Here, it's very different. You you join a club team in high school, and that's how you right. advance. And those club teams are wanting to use more data analytics with Polar and other wearables. They may not have the advanced video systems, but they are trying to get into data collection. Right. Um, now, what happens with that data? Um, whether you're a child or, or you're in, in, in college. Um, one of the big issues with the NFL, as everybody knows, is concussion and the concussion protocol. Okay, so they have a protocol for the professional athletes. There is no protocol on the college level, right. and yeah, much less the high school, yeah, high school yeah, level. They're exactly. getting there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if my child gets hit and has a concussion, that concussion is going to follow them through their right. whole career. Um, once the data is tracked. Yeah. So these are the things that we have to think about. If I don't put my child in that data track, they may not be recruited because right. the teams want to start using more of that data to recruit. So it's a very difficult situation for parents to make that decision because if you think that concussion stops with the NFL, it doesn't. Or yeah. with, with your college, it doesn't. That's stored in a Google server, which other companies can get access right. to if Google sells it. Right. So um, that concussion, if, if right now, um, you know, if, if we changed medical practices where you could discriminate on pre-existing conditions again, that would that yeah. would be something to concern be concerned about. I, I, I find but I find this whole part of the discussion so fascinating. And I and I still even want to go a back. a little bit terrifying. Yeah. Slightly I hope. terrifying. <laughs> Doom I'm, and gloom about I'm this. I'm terrified. <laughs> well, no. But the problem is, you can when you can see the data, you get really more concerned about sure. what's happening with that data. Right. Right. So. And and I want to go back a little bit to the conversation about at the professional. I want to I want to yeah. dive deeper into all of it. But if you go back to the professional level again, you know, I'm a player. Yes, uh, you're paying me. I get it. But I am giving you parts of me right. through yeah. my data yeah. Yeah. that you are using. And, and you might not just be using it to facilitate a team decision mm -hmm. or even to, you know, okay, fine, let's say on the, on the outer edges that you're selling data to the media companies so that they can make the viewing experience more exciting. You know, yes, fans want to know more about me. I get that. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. so I see that. But again... If you're talking about some of this data now is now is is permeating into the betting world, is perme permeating into bigger decisions that are being made. Mm -hmm. I I'm flabbergasted that that the players unions have not stepped up yet. Like I am I want to go duh. Honestly, are you kidding me? I, I am too. They need to. I mean, I I don't know what the hold off hold up is because this has been an issue. Like if you go to the MIT Sloan. Um, sports analytics conference. This has been a, on a topic of discussion for a couple of years now. Okay. And it's really interesting to me to see the shift in the players on stage. So the first time I went to the MIT Sloan conference and, and also talking personally with, with the players off stage is, is, is a very different experience. Right. Off stage, they sound the same as they did two years ago, where they were like, I don't you know, this is a pain in my ass. This yeah. is, this is. I don't want this tracking. Where is it going? I own the data. Um, one of the guys from the Cleveland Browns, and I won't say who it was, but he was talking about how he had this wearable on his back, and he just, it was tracking how he ran, where he threw, that kind of thing. He yeah. finally just um, <laughs> ripped the thing off and <laughs> threw it across the field, and was like, "Track that, bitches!" <laughs> you know? he was just so mad. So because so until this year, unfortunately for the Cleveland Browns, no amount of tracking. Yeah. Was right. Exactly. Let's be honest, think folks. It really helped at all. Exactly. <laughs> I've got bigger issues going on. Right. So, <laughs> so, but you see him come back a couple of years later, and he's all bought in to, hmm. like, not bought in. He's all um, messaged up. You know, he's somebody has given him the the corporate line sure. to speak, and yeah. I don't know if that's because the sponsorships, the the payment levels of are overlapping between tech and yeah. the team. So it's it's much harder for them to criticize. But I think behind the scenes, they're very concerned, um, as they should be. 
and it should be part. And there is no clear rules right now. Uh, yeah. But again, where is the players' union in all yeah, of this? Yeah, I, I don't understand. I, I know. Unless I, they, unless they see a benefit to to them as an organization, I, yeah, that's the only the, time you ever see. The other you know, issue is no one knows. It's tech. These right. people aren't versed in tech, right? So they need people who understand the tech to under, to understand how to regulate it. Yeah. Even within a corporate uh, or like a collective bargaining situation, if you don't understand the tech, it's hard for you to think about how that can be used. So I just mentioned it can be put up on a Google server. Well, as we all know, Google sells data. Yeah. That's how they make money. So if right. it's up on the Google server, what are your protections? Yeah. If it's in the Google cloud, what are your protections? Um, they're matching all kinds of information. So I think Again, we just want to continue to terrify our audience. Yes, I know, I know, <laughs> What's I know. Going on do, you out wear, there? do you wear a fit? It, like I use no. Google Fit. Mm-mm. No, I, I use not. I use Google. So oh, great. Now I'm. Yeah. Now I'm a little upset about that. No, I think I'm probably par- more paranoid because I do work in the data right. world. No, but, I say. Even, but you know, it's also interesting because I. I mean, we're talking. We're talking athletes. But if I'm a fan and I'm sitting in the stadium, can you tell me what's happening to me? Because these robots are not just watching the players, right? Um, these cameras aren't just tracking. They the can't behavior. tell you what's happening with your body right, right now. They can. <laughs> Do you really want me to yeah. dive into this? <laughs> because I think people want to know. know. For people who are listening, know. saying, "Hey, I'm not an athlete. What do I really care about? What's going on?" I mean, data analytics is not just about performance no, on the field. Very really, much it's not just about the sports teams. It's the about athletes fan themselves. engagement, exactly. So, which tell is us about, what's happening there? Yeah. So, fan engagement is about selling more tickets. Selling so. Here's some things that yes. can be done. <laughs> Brace yourselves. Hide. Yes. Walk in under uh, under a uh, blanket and hide. <laughs> I lo- Ryan's I wish, over here going, I'm not going see, anywhere I wish, again. I wish our audience could see Jane's hands because she's getting very excited. When I she starts to <laughs> tap her fingers <laughs> on the table. This means there are good things to come, my oh, friends. Oh, at least juicy things to come. <laughs> so, um, all right, let's just start with facial recognition te- technology. The, yeah. These cameras, um, one of the things that they all can do is recognize your face. So whether you're logged in on your app or not, you have certainly loaded up photos to Facebook or to Google, yeah. um, and those photos have been tracked by Facebook and Google, and you think they end there, but they do not. Yeah. When you walk in the stadium, they see your face and they tag you and they know where you've been. Yeah. Um, so they can match that to your social media. Um, they can match that to your buying habits, to your credit card, see how they can sell you more tickets. Basically, yeah. how can they sell you merchandise? I'm not saying all teams are doing this. There are rich teams. There are poor teams. Not everybody's doing this. Sure. So, um, but that's one potential use. Um, the other thing is the app on your phone. If you have a team's app on your phone now, again, this depends on the league, depends on the team and what they're doing. Right. But the smart ones, <laughs> yep. um, most of us <laughs> don't turn off GPS. They can see if you're in town yeah. and if they want to sell you a ticket. Right. Um, Wh- and, and Which, and by the way... It's a good thing. Like I was going to say, besides Aira, there are a lot of us who like to get those notifications that, I hey, I, I want tell to be notified what, of nothing. Yes. I'll, I'll tell this to the, I'm sorry I'm in L.A. right now, but to the San Francisco Giants. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you see on my phone that I am in town and yeah. you know, I know you know You're right. what section I like to sit in <laughs> and there's a seat available, please ping me. Yeah. I will buy it. Right. No, but, but that's, that's the right. point. Like you, we, we, yeah. it's, a, it's a love-hate relationship. Sure. Like sure. it is, I, you know, from a player perspective, I could see it more as a hate relationship, honestly, mm-hmm. because again, you know, there's a there's a there's something about an athlete that is can't always be quantified by how fast they run, how far they they leap, how tall they you know how high they get when they jump or anything mm-hmm. like that. There's a lot of um, you know how hard they're willing to work. How hard exactly? You know? So in a way, I I can I feel more like it works against them you know, than for them. But from a fan perspective, again, taking era out of the picture, <laughs> um, I, you know, I don't, on a certain level, and I, I honestly don't want you to go to tell me everything that they all use my stuff for, but on a certain level, I appreciate getting those notices. Well, and that's why we keep playing along because we, it, it works. I mean, right. you, you get good information that you want a lot right. of the time. Yeah. So um, it's just, you don't know where all that data is. Is that's going. it. Going I mean, it's, it's worth at what cost? Yeah. That, that one ticket they've just sold you. I mean, it's, you know, yeah. so you got pinged at what cost? Yeah. It's a hard life to live without data. God knows I've been trying it. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I see how it's sold right. and traded. So but, uh, on the athlete level, um, you know, it's really interesting. There's another product that um, came out 
I think last year, and I can't remember the name of the product, but luckily I don't have any deal or partnership with it, so it doesn't matter if I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you, it allows the players to sell their own data. Now, the problem with that is, so the, it, to them it feels like they're taking control. Sure. The problem with that is they can't take it back. People right. are betting on them. They're yeah. a, a winning or losing commodity at yeah. that point. Now, let's say that player is then injured and they've sold all this data. People can make all kinds of infra uh, assumptions yeah. about your health and recovery once you've sold that data. Sure. How long will it take them to recover? What are the other medical issues that are going on? That's why we protect that data. Not to mention that, you know, a, a team sharing that data is a HIPAA compliance issue in right. the United States. But um but athletes selling their own data, I think, is a lack of understanding of how that can come back wow. to bite them. Yeah. And so this is an issue that absolutely needs to be tackled, not just yeah. by collective bar bargaining here in the United States right. in our leagues, but everywhere and down to the, the, the high school and student level and That's collegiate wild. level. So we need a how-to guide. Yeah, yeah. And I don't have it yet, except <laughs> opt out, opt out. Yeah, no, opt out. <laughs> In the meantime, opt out. But, but again, but how you interesting, can't. but you can't. You know, we you go can't. back to it, it kind of... It, in a very circular, not circular, but a winding way, right. it kind of goes back to the conversation about to kneel or not to kneel. Sure. Like, yeah. You know, if you're an athlete and you work for a team and the team's role is you stand up at the national anthem and you disobey, then, you know, you're putting yourself at risk for being cut from the team, right? The same way if a team says, look, you work for me. You're going to wear this wearable. You're going to do this, and you're going to do that. Yeah. You Both know, issues part cross of what's a personal right and what's a corporate exactly. right. Yeah. And, exactly. Um, and in this case, um, and I would say that one too, that your personal rights are, are very important, and we can't turn everything over of our life to a corporation. Now, if that's what they agree on in yeah. in collective bargaining, that's that's between them and the players. Sure. I'm, that's my opinion, and it means absolutely nothing. <laughs> In this it means, case, but we can express like us. Yes. <laughs> exactly. We can validate and affirm you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and if that's what you know, the players' represent representatives decide is good for them in the long term. You know, just decide. Right. right. Do something. Yeah. Come up with uh, somebody protect these players because yeah. I don't know who's doing it right now. Exactly. And again, it's probably with good, good intent, but they just don't have the understanding of where they should be drawing lines around data. Right. Sure. So tell us what you are excited about. What's what's to come that we don't even know about just yet? Oh, man. Uh, what's to come? Uh, I, here's something I'm really excited about. Um, and for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> again, Which means she's even tapping better. again. Exactly. <laughs> for all the wrong reasons because, um, okay, well, I'll tell you why. But um, I love smart textiles, smart wear. Um, so the shirts, the jerseys that... Yeah. Um, I saw a demo of this uh, a while ago, and I just fell in love. So it's uh, you, the t players wear a jersey. Now that that smart textile can do a lot of things. It, it could take away the wearables, and that it, it can measure um, if it's constructed right. You could put all kinds of analytics in it to okay. measure heart rate, running, yep. um, uh, hydration levels, all kinds of information. But what's cool about it? Yeah. What the, the part that I really loved was um, if you put your hand on it, it yeah. leaves a handprint. Oh. Which will upend the whole game of soccer and diving. Wow. So if you Okay, dive, can you explain that for people who might be watching but aren't soccer fans? Okay, so soccer. Um, and Ari, you're welcome to jump in on yes. this. I know <laughs> yeah, I'm sure she will. Yes. About it. <laughs> <laughs> so diving is, is common in men's soccer, yes, I would like to you. emphasize. Yeah. Because women in women's... Don't find the need for this. They cannot dive. So dive is faking an, a, a foul or an injury. Yeah. Um, women can't do that because they're already seen as not able to play. So if you start rolling around like you're injured, then right. it just it reinforces that women can't play. So exactly. they will play through all kinds of fouls and injuries and never yep. do never, anything yep. to flag it. Um, men, on the other hand... Um, will dive. It's called yeah. diving, which if anybody who's watched a World Cup will see a player ro fall down and start rolling on the ground holding And their don't make us start calling out specific countries because yes. we, we know who the worst offenders we are. We know who they are. Like, <laughs> yes, and yes. one of the biggest ones might not have been participating in the last World Cup. Maybe. <laughs> Let's just perhaps say. Perhaps not. <laughs> Karma is a bitch. <laughs> That's <all they're> exactly. <laughs> and I cannot, you know, slam specific teams or countries. But, um, you know it's a fake if they're rolling on the ground holding their their knee or mm -hmm. ankle. If they mm -hmm. fall and drop and stop, 
they're actually injured. Yeah. Because you don't have the energy or, or to right. to roll and grab. Right. So yeah. anyway, let's just start with that. But the smart textiles would end that. Yeah. To my absolute joy. So that's my yeah. Controversial I love comment that. because if, <laughs> if you've if you've is it clear now if you uh, I understood I was just trying now? to make sure our okay. listeners our, our viewers yeah. understood. the handprint I love if there's so if, I touched if you if really they, where's where, my handprint where's my handprint yeah bring it I pushed you really yeah. where is my handprint how long does it how long does it that. stay in place for um I don't know but long enough for somebody uh, to notice ref, the ref to come over I feel like we need these smart textiles these jerseys for our kids your 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 sister hits you. Show me where that handprint is. Exactly. Oh, really? He kicked you? Show me Show where that me footprint where that is. is. <laughs> People kicking themselves. Exactly. Free will is out out the window. There is no free will with smart textiles. That's Zero. So I love it. Oh, I am for that reason. I'm excited very about that. Excited that is it. That's all. The show can end right now. Yeah. We've got we've got the handprint. The diving has come to an end. World oh. Cups. Whole new experience oh, now. Exactly. So exciting. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So, so that's very exciting uh-huh. for all those out there who can't stand to watch the yeah. drama that goes on on yeah. the soccer field, football field. Um, but you know, one of the things I've read, which kind of goes to this point, is that there's so much amazing technology out there, and so many um, ways that you can create to assess and track data like what yeah. do you want what do you want to know sure. right yeah that one of the things i read are that teams are actually getting paralyzed because and i i'm assuming that this is w- your pitch yeah so i'm curious to hear it but it, it was out there in in kind of the media that i was reading like paralyzed to how do i use it like i don't even know what to do with it i collect it all yeah, exactly. i yeah. collect and it all I'm- and it's like uh okay so add add another you know jersey that's going to tell me 400 more data points what the hell all you know? i need is that handprint yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah i know we'll keep <laughs> exactly. we'll keep, the handprint. We'll yeah. keep the handprint we'll keep the handprint i got it data. Yeah. I need that <laughs> give me the handprint <laughs> and that's hopefully where it will move i want you to know by yeah. the way there are other mothers who are watching who have said amen to the, right? to the kid one yeah <laughs> we just got very excited exactly yeah. exactly yeah. <laughs> I would have liked that too. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah and that's that's kind of how we got started was um, the overwhelming amount of data. And if it's if you just got all these stacks of data, it's like looking for a needle in the haystack. The right. one thing that that on base percentage yeah. um, data point that's going to give you that competitive ad- advantage. Finding that needle in in the haystack is, is hard if you can't put all the data gather, together and do analytics that let it rise above. Otherwise, yeah. you're spending all your time, man, just just cleaning the data. I right. Mean, just building programs to clean the data, yeah. much less make sense of it. Um, so, yeah, I think they're, they're quite overwhelmed, right? most well, teams. You know. But what's exciting, I think, also is that there's a whole new world now to tap into. If you're not a sports fan, if you're not really an athlete, if you don't really see yourself being able to play football, soccer somehow, but you are a tech geek... This is an amazing area for you to tap into, be able to you know show up and so, and, and help sort of digest all this information, yeah. and contribute to something, yeah. you know, in the sports world, but not be a particularly great athlete yourself. Absolutely, right? absolutely. I mean, because we hear that all the time. I think certainly with with kids. I mean, I've got you know, my kids both play sports, but some mm-hmm. of their friends who are a bit you know just not really athletic and not really coordinated quite that will feel feel a little a little left out when they're not part of that soccer game or that football game you know what i mean yeah. but they're really great with the computers and their phones and you know these apps and all these amazing things so there really is a whole new world now that we're being able to Absolutely. You know, and there are so many ways this technology is young so if i i always tell MIT Sloan you know yeah. that they're they're putting on this conference for students who yeah. will be the next generation of innovators and they don't talk enough about what's wrong with the technology, meaning what we need to do next. Okay. Um, and so anybody who's thinking about what can I create? <laughs> sure. Um, you know, the data needs to get better. The transmission of the data is 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 off a lot okay. right now. And you'll see that in StatCast. If you've ever watched a StatCast broadcast, um, uh, suddenly you've got a cheetah on the field. Somebody's running 100 miles an hour. Well, that's a StatCast data right. transmission issue. Um, so the, the data needs to get more reliable. Okay. Um, and that's a transmission issue. So anybody who wants to hack that and do yeah, that. And speaking of, of hacking, the next one is security. These things right. are, these wearables can be hacked easily, 
easily. And why do they want to hack that? Because who wouldn't want to know the vitals on Messi? Yeah, if you're right, betting? exactly. Right. Or who who wouldn't want to know the vitals on? Or who wouldn't want to change it so that you can you could uh, like mess with the yeah, with you can the, manipulate that. Yeah, if right. you're the spread. a competitive yeah. team, that, yeah. And you want to hack that information. So security is not nearly talked enough about in, in here. Um, and I want to say that I love data. I work in data. Sure. So I've, I've disparaged it a lot. Yeah. The reason I do is because it's a wild, wild west right now. We yeah. need to put some some controls around that data and say this is how it can be used and this is how it can't. But the data is, back to your points, super helpful. Yeah. When used correctly, it's super helpful in helping prevent injuries, helping understand what causes a hamstring injury. Right. So that, um, and one of the fascinating things that one of the UEFA teams is doing is tracking growth spurts in young boys mm. when they're uh, in the youth academies. So you want to be able to push them without injuring them. Right. Oh, it's so interesting. Yeah. So how can you do that? And data is helping them continue to train without you know, breaking them. Right. Basically, because then you've got a long term injury. Yeah, exactly. Um, or you set them up for long term injury <coughs> yeah. when they're finally hit maturity. And yeah. it's like then they wonder why their yeah. ankles keep going out. Right. Right. So when they're in this growth spurt in adolescence and they don't know where the end of the arms and the legs are. Yeah. Data is really useful in being able to manage that and help them make better decisions about health and safety. I just and wanted to stop thing. with that, with that that's team a good and thing. that player. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's all really good things. I right. just don't want everyone in the world to have access to it. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I have, we, and, and, and the nice part is we have a viewer who's not just talking on, uh, on the Facebook page, but he's yeah. texting me saying he has, he has a solution for the hacking. So okay. if you would like to talk to him afterwards, oh, yes. I can connect. The yes. Let's, like I just looked connect. down. Like, <laughs> I would love to see that. I mean, it's just, um, and I'm looking for like encryption at the hardware to level and at the transmission level and that kind of thing. So if, if, if he's a tech person, I'm, he I'm is going all geeky now. Please be serious. We will not put you in touch with Jane unless you are absolutely serious and exactly. have something I meaningful to contribute to the I table want discussion. authentication of, at the hardware level. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he is a tech geek. I can, I, can assure, I can assure you that. Whether you want to work with him or not, I don't know, but he's a tech geek. Excellent. I look forward to that. So, <laughs> so in, your, in your history working in this field, I'd be curious because you were talking a little bit before we came on air about like you've been around the behind the scenes mm -hmm. and all of that. Can you share any like stories of decisions made by a team, by a manager based off analytics that you went, oh my God, like that was either brilliant or was that just Give stupid? Us those nuggets. Like what, what's a, <laughs> <laughs> a decision made by a manager or, or, that was or, a, or a team owner, whatever that was whatever brilliant or not. If it was, brilliant i probably couldn't tell you what it was because it would give it away okay. <laughs> uh, like who it was and what what they did um i think there are easy ones to point out um like leicester city and their big um upset yeah right? yeah and even iceland and their big upset that's that's data that's understanding a small shift and i will say um they did some really interesting analytics on on goalkeeping that was hmm a different way of looking at things that nobody had done before. I think everybody's caught up at this point. So the, yeah. the great thing about this is um, you have to stay on top of it. Sure. The minute you get on base, on base percentage or goalkeeping analytics that help you win. Yeah. Things are changing so fast. What's your, next? Your competitors got it. Yeah. They're right up on it. So you need to be two steps ahead of everybody and, and looking yeah. at what the next big, big one is. Right. Um, the, the big wins where I saw um, this is common. Honestly, because managers don't trust data. Most well, that's of them. interesting. Most of them don't. They're they're more old school. Yeah. Now, as we get this other generation coming up that that grew up with grew data up. Yeah. and technology, the, I think different. that will change. Yeah. But for now, you have an old school mentality across a lot of the coaches and managers that is. I know more about this game than any computer could tell me, and right. respect because you have a feel for it. True. Yeah. True, and there is a lot to be said. For gut instinct, absolutely in sport, a lot. I mean, things that computers will not even artificial intelligence will. Yeah. Would artificial intelligence have ever told Pele, in that one game, to do a bicycle kick? Right. No. Yeah. But that was the beauty of that iconic moment when yeah. Pele did that bicycle kick. That is human ingenuity, human gut Guts. instinct. Right. So that may, remains. Key oh my God, game. that just made me think of, of Diego Maradona and the hand yes. of God. And I'm like, I, I want now the hand on the ball. Yeah. Right? 
<laughs> smart technology. I want that handprint on the ball. On the ball, exactly. Right? I, I, <laughs> you're so funny. Different. You're like, I'm totally. I am yeah, exactly. I'm, now we can go back and just reimagine yeah, all these scenarios time. with this new technology, go back right? In time. Exactly. <laughs> No, but I think that's really, I think that's really a, a, a fantastic point. One that I think we all know intuitively, but right. um, and and again, I, I I feel like everybody talks about that. You can't know the heart of a player. You mm-hmm. can't know the mind of a manager. You can't, you know, sometimes they see things in ways that the best computers are never going to be able to show them because right. on top of it, because they know the players personally, they know, or the coaches on the other side, or yeah. they know the team so well because for whatever the reason, yeah. which I think will always make sports amazing yeah, because sure. of that. It doesn't you cannot how much predict you, it. You completely. cannot predict it pr- uh, completely. Yeah. You don't know how somebody feels in the morning when they yep. wake up, you know, and they're trying. They would love sure. to get. They're working. Uh, that talk about ne- interesting next technologies, behavioral and psychological um, technology, which is a lot of AR, AI, and machine learning kind of technology. Mm-hmm. But I don't think they'll ever get it. You know? Yeah, I read about that too. They yeah. were talking about some data points that they're able to pull about. You know, emo- emotional intelligence predict it. Like they can they can watch players over a period of time and predict. Certain situations will they will react in a certain way right. in certain situations statistically more than others mm-hmm. and yeah. and you can you can make some predictions like you know don't put him under the basket because he freaks out because this is what he always does yeah. so like let's make sure he doesn't ever go there. But yeah. again, at the end of the day, you you it's very hard to unless you're really I think capturing so much information and really analyzing it to see over time how a person grows in emotionally how they sure. they yeah. grow intellectually how they grow you know f- from not only a physical way but just yeah. in so many different ways that it, and it'll never really one of the dangers of data is locking them in mm-hmm. into a bias um Steph Curry, as a co- collegiate player, was not the player that he is today. Right. He's a very right. controlled right. And, and decisive and strategic player. And if you had graded him and, and said, okay, he can never play at the three-point line, yeah. what would you have lost exactly right, by by doing that? So you do have to give them room to grow. Yeah, Tom Brady, same thing. I mean, yeah. there's so many, so many yeah. incredible players. So, you know, same thing. You look back at their high school collegiate careers, just yeah. these were not going to be the big stars. And then... Yeah, they and put in the work and are. look at what they did. And it, on the relative age bias would have left out uh, rel- relative age bias for anybody who doesn't know that is a measurement that is being slowly upended by data. But in um, I, in Europe and soccer was okay. Players born between this mo- these months sure. can't play. They have yeah. to be born in these months or better players. And um, are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah, that that was a long time bias, um, and it's being upended. But An, that would have um, left out Messi completely, right? So many Isn't that things. Wild? The relative age bias, his size, everything would have left yeah. him out as this star, amazing player. Yeah. So bias is and data that locks in. Machine learning learns the last data point and keeps right. building on it. A- yeah. AI learns the last data point and keeps building on it. So you get a lot of false information about it that doesn't hmm. leave room for growth, yeah. for change. And that's what makes us super amazing human beings. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The cost of potential for t- personal transformation. Yeah. On every level. Yeah. Yeah, It's amazing. Uh, Just a quick word about how data is being incorporated at the collegiate or at the, you mentioned a little bit about the youth academy level, but in terms of the U.S. and and how are universities, are they able to even financially, you know, take on more information, have more technology, and and how are they coordinating that? Oh, my God. Actually... Colleges are on the cutting edge. Uh, well, you, Imagine you might think so. The workforce yeah. they have. Yeah. yeah. All the computer exactly. science majors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is how Absolutely. they can get experience. They are building amazing yeah. products. Um, but are they using them? Yes. There's. A, oh, I, I wish I could remember the name of the college. And somebody's going to call in and like um, kill me for this. But it's a small university in North Carolina yeah. that got its. Um, they were like last in the league, and they got their data scientists together to come up and figure out how their basketball team could win oh we, we talk, ha- yeah we talked to them we yeah. have we talked to yeah. them yeah yeah a year or so ago yeah. Yeah, right yeah, we yeah. had them on, on yeah. our show uh, yeah. tim is their yeah is, their coach it was like yeah. amazing yeah, yeah. yeah exactly yeah yeah so yes is the answer yes they are doing amazing things it's working and it's the computer science people and these are yeah. the next innovators of the next wave so 
Um, I'm really excited to see what I, I think some of the most amazing innovation is actually happening at the college level because they have free workforce. But is it prote- uh, along with the innovation is the protection for the players there? No. Oh, no. no. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. They're not thinking about that. I mean, we can't even, <laughs> we can't even get health care or long term issue, uh, long term disability issues for college athletes who are yeah. injured. Um, and that's a whole other show. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, they're not protecting their data. They're not. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can't emphasize that enough. The answer is just right. no. no. And are they, coordinating, are they coordinating with the professional leagues? Are they yeah. handing over data so that the professional leagues can make d- different decisions about who they're going to draft? Uh, absolutely. And I think mm-hmm. that depends on the school and the team, but absolutely anything they can do. So the more players they send yeah. to professional yeah. leagues, the, more the better they can yeah. recruit. The, yeah, yeah. That, that, that helps the recruiting on yeah. every level, not yeah. just the athletes, but the students sure. who choose yeah. to go there. Absolutely. So absolutely. Any information they can they can share and sell, they do. Wow. Not sell, sorry. They're not selling data. They're sharing data. They're sharing, yes. They're oh, sharing. Or, they're, or they're sort of not they're sharing, sharing data. They're sharing okay. data. Selling, uh, okay. You heard it right here, folks. They're not selling they're data. Not selling they're data. sharing They it. only share. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Google, All right. Google, however. Yeah. <laughs> selling. 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 <laughs> I hate to say this, but we are at the end of the show. It goes by so fast. So and does. I didn't even ask half the questions that I wanted to. So hopefully the next time you swing through Los Angeles, we will have you back to talk love about to so much back. more. Thank you so much. Technology in sports is one of like my favorite. I love the topic. All I needed was the handprint the hand on print. the shirt. That's it. I, I, <laughs> Did my, that make the show? I, it's <laughs> a whole new world. Yes, it made the show. What more do you need? Just, you know, I'm off to Barcelona on Wednesday, but yeah. guess who showed me that smart textile? It was the Innovation Hub in Barcelona. Oh, oh that's, that's awesome. awesome. Things. Yeah. That's awesome. Look at that. Well, Very cool. Yeah. We look forward to seeing that and from having you back again. And yeah. I want to thank, we want to thank all of you who have been watching us, we appreciate you guys. I see you coming on. And you can find us at the distilleryinc.com. Jane, you want to give a, a shout out to your website or any information you want to give on your company? Sure. Um, if you're a professional team, you can find us at wellplayedsports.com. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, I don't know if <laughs> amateurs need to know anything. Well, they might. <laughs> you never know. You it. never but know. For those who are tackling the hacking and uh, you know security, yes, you now know where to get to. Get you, to. So. And, and uh, the other thing I need is a flat, like, Band-Aid size wearable to measure a concussion. Go. Okay. <laughs> all right. They're on it. out there. <laughs> College um, students all around the country. <laughs> not a, <laughs> we're back on Tuesday, yes? We're back on Tuesday. Not only can you find us at the distilleryinc.com, we have a Facebook page. You can also subscribe to us to these uh, podcasts on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, CastBox, Switcher, Stitcher, Stitcher. Stitcher. Um, So please do so. Like us, follow us, share us with your friends. We will see you on Tuesday. Again, it's been three shows in a row, which is very exciting. And uh, thank you, Ryan, for all your help. And we will see you soon. Thank you, everyone. Thanks so much.